Hopes of reviving Southeast Asia's tourism industry have received a blow as new COVID-19 infections emerge in holiday hotspots. Now, Thailand's proposal to reopen Phuket next month is now in doubt after the country reported its first locally transmitted case in 100 days. For Bali, initial plans were made to reopen to tourists from this month, but that's already been postponed indefinitely after cases spiked when domestic tourism was restarted. For a closer look at this, we're joined by Prem Shamdasani, he's Associate Professor at the NUS Business School. Professor, good evening. Thank you for joining us this evening. So tourism revenue is the lifeblood of places like Bali and Good evening. You know, it, 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 tourism revenue is so important to Bali and Phuket. What could further delays to reopening borders mean for these places? Yeah, unfortunately, there's no way out for these tourism hotspots, you know, because their economies have not been diversified beyond tourism. In fact, I just read recently a lot of tourist workers are now going back to the farms to tie themselves over uh, in the meantime till the pandemic situation resolves itself. So it's, it's tough. Uh, it's, it could be a short-term blip, but it's a painful blip, and it's just basically going through, um, you know, till things improve. There's no other way out, in my opinion. Yeah. All right, so if they're going to have to ride it out, then what are some of the ways to curb infection risks while also perhaps limiting damage to the tourism industry? Yeah, I think there's definitely a need for, for transparency, and the tourism authorities and the tourism ecosystem really have to demonstrate end-to-end -end commitment to safety, hygiene, hygiene standards and protocols as well. I mean, I was very impressed with the Dubai recently really advertising the fact that they're opening up their borders, they're inviting back tourism, and they're demonstrating that end-to-end -end commitment from pre-boarding to safety and hygiene in the aircraft, to immigration, right to the point where you actually end up at the resorts and the hotels. So there's definitely a need for transparency. You need to assure tourists that you have the end-to-end -end protocols in place to ensure safety hygiene. And if things do, uh, do flare mm -hmm. up, you know, you have the appropriate emergency procedures to manage that as well. In the meantime, though, is encouraging perhaps domestic tourism the way forward? I think so, you know, given the fact that this pandemic situation may last a couple more months, I think domestic tourism may end up giving opportunities to the tourism sector to reimagine and reinvent themselves. Maybe start thinking about uh, running lean operations, improving operational efficiency, reducing costs, uh, trying to find ways to improve the service quality, investing in digitalization, automation, and at least use the so-called quiet period, unfortunately, to sort of rethink the business model operations and maybe redefine the kind of experiences they want to provide. And once the COVID situation is after us, uh, hopefully uh, they are be much more agile and be able to scale up to take advantage of the future opportunities. Right, indeed. But it will be some time still. Thank you so much for um, speaking to us and for your analysis. We've been speaking with Professor Prem Shamdasani from NUS Business School.